So I had a YouTube viewer attempt to remove a brass spud from a cast iron radiator and upon doing so, he nicked the inside of the radiator and he's asking, Bob, what can I do about it? Is it going to leak? How can I correct it? I'll tell you what, let's jump down to the bench, we'll discuss it and I'll show you what I do. So I had a YouTube viewer ask, Bob, I attempted to remove the spud from my cast iron steam radiator and upon taking this out and shearing off the spud here, he, he actually nicked the inside of the radiator. And let me preface this video by saying I did a video on how to remove and replace a steam radiator valve in a steam heating system. And I will leave the link to that video in the description box below. I suggest you go back and watch that video so you'll have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. In particular, part two, how to remove and replace a steam valve part two. But basically, when you have a, a, a steam radiator valve that's been in there any number of years, these spuds, people are under the impression that these will screw out, and that's just not the case. They basically get steam welded in there. They're in there 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever the case may be. And even with an internal wrench, a good quality internal wrench, people will put the wrench in there, and they will attempt to put their pipe wrench on here and try to take this out counterclockwise. And these things just will not budge because they've basically been steam welded in there. So... What the procedure is that I do is I'll take a hacksaw. A lot of guys will use a sawzall, but I use a hacksaw. And I will come in and I will actually leave, leave about two or three threads of this spud sticking past the radiator. Two, three threads. And I'll actually shear this off. I'll cut this off flush right down until I can knock this off. Now what you end up with is maybe two, three threads of brass sticking past the radiator. So how do you get that out? Again, I want you to reference that video I mentioned, but basically, we're gonna use our imagination here. I'm gonna unscrew this and get it out of the way. So if you can imagine, I have two, three threads of brass sticking past the radiator. Then what I do is, I'll come in with my hacksaw blade, or I will come in with, actually, my preferred method is this little mini hacksaw blade, and I'll proceed to cut up make an upward cut through the brass spud. And the idea is I try to make that cut where I just about get through it completely, not quite all the way. And then what I'll do is I'll get my chisel and I'll knock the two pieces down and collapse the pieces in there and it'll come right out. Again, watch that video, how to remove and replace a steam radiator valve part two. But what many people do either because they don't have enough experience or some guys are real rough and tumble and rather than use a hacksaw blade or a mini saw what they like to do is go in there with a sawzall and unless you have experience working with a sawzall and knowing when to stop you can actually get right through here and you'll put a you put a nice little cut you put a cut right into the radiator I don't know if you can see this here but there's a cut in here right in here and you know what I'm going to do, just to make this a little clearer for you, I'm going to stop the video here, and I'm going to flip this radiator upside down. I'm going to show you how, how deep this cut is to give you an idea. And that's what he was concerned about. You know, he felt, Bob, I cut this. How am I going to be able to keep anything from leaking in here? And I'll show you what I do. So give me a sec. Let me flip this radiator upside down. I'll reposition the camera, and we will continue on. Okay, here we are back, and I have this radiator flipped upside down, and I hope you can see this, but there's actually a nick. We went too far into the threads of the radiator, and, you know, if, if, if you guys are just going to proceed to put Teflon tape on here, that may be a problem. You may end up having a leak out of here. And when that happens, or even, you know, if I should happen to do this, um, I'll show you exactly what I do. Now, this is going to apply to whether you're removing a piece of pipe from a fitting or whether you're cutting out a spud like this. Sometimes, you know, you just aren't in the right position. Uh, in particular, if you're trying to remove a broken piece of pipe from a fitting, you may be up in the ceiling, you may be out of angle, and as much as you try to stop before you penetrate the piece you're trying to remove, you ultimately end up making a little cut in here. Now, this is a rather deep cut. I, at least I would consider that a rather deep cut. 
but fear not. I'm going to show you what I do. And basically, you know, today is everything is with Teflon, and we're so used to using Teflon uh, to put our fittings back together again. Now, let me just push this out of the way a second here. And so normally we would take our Teflon tape. At least that's what most people would do. And let me just get this Teflon started here. And bear with me. Because this stuff is really a pain in the neck. So we have our Teflon here. And what most people would do is they would proceed to put the Teflon on in a clockwise direction here. Clockwise we go. And normally, I would tell you, that's probably all you're going to need, in addition to some pipe joint compound, normal pipe joint compound, a normal Teflon-based pipe joint compound. Uh, this is what most people would do. But with this nick in here, it's a little bit of a concern. So I'll sh what I do is when I come across, or if I happen to be the one who makes the nick, I actually will, instead of using Teflon, and let me see if I can get this off. This is a pain in the butt to get off. But let me remove all this Teflon from here. And, wow, this stuff is a pain in the butt to get off. I'm removing my Teflon here. And what I did in the old days, before Teflon was even invented, is I used good old fashioned Lampwick. Now, you may be saying to yourself, what the heck is Lampwick, Bob? But I'll tell you in a second, so bear with me. Well, success, we finally got all that Teflon off. And in a case where we have a severe nick in the radiator, what I do is I revert back to the old fashioned Lampwick. It basically looks like a spool of thread. And this is the way we did things before Teflon was even invented. And basically what we're doing is we're taking our lamp work and we are starting midway here. I don't go all the way to the end, I, maybe midway. And you start, to, you start to thread this on the threads in a clockwise fashion. Same, same way you would do Teflon tape. You go in a clockwise fashion. And the idea is to get it in between the threads. You would get this thread down in between each thread. And you can actually... You could actually, you heard that it fell on the floor, but that's okay. You could actually go back and forth and actually put enough of this on here to where it, it got even with the threads themselves. And at, at some point when we feel we have enough on there, we would actually break it off. And then what I would do is I would follow up with an application of a product called blue block. Now, I'm not going to actually apply it here in this video because this stuff, once it gets on here, it makes one heck of a, in addition to a watertight seal, it makes a mess and a half. And a little caution, people, if if if, if you're going to do this, I, I would recommend you use gloves because if this gets on you, you're going to need lacquer thinner to get it off. So we would follow the Lampwick up with an application of blue block. And then we would actually go ahead, put our collar back on, and then proceed to put it in the radiator and make that up with a with our internal pipe wrench. Now, you can, if you want, if you have a severe, really, really severe cut, I, I what I've actually done is I put the lamp wick on, and then I've followed up with two or three rounds of Teflon tape. I have done that before. I have also put the tape on first, followed by the lamp wick. Some guys will put the lamp wick, followed by the tape, followed by more lamp wick. It depends on how severe this cut is. But I'll say this, once you put your lamp wick on, which is basically a bulletproof way of sealing a joint, and once you follow that up with an application of your blue 
blue block, excuse me, sealant, you would proceed to put your collar on or, or whatever the case may be, if you, you know, just replacing a piece of pipe and you're going to put this in here, you're going to get your internal pipe wrench and you're going to whack this up clockwise. And the best case scenario, folks, would be to let this set for 24 hours because this stuff will, will set and literally it'll be a bulletproof joint. You will not be able to uh, find a leak once you use this blue block stuff. Uh, it's gotten me out of a lot of jams. And whenever I make an excessive cut, and it looks like it's going to be a questionable joint that I don't think is going to really hold, that's what I do. So I still to this day carry my roll or my spool of lampwick. And again, lampwick is simply, it's, this is a cotton-based thread, if you will, that you put in between the threads. And that's what I do when I cut too far into a fitting. Now, there have been times when I've actually cut so far into the fitting, I've actually destroyed the fitting, but uh, that's not the goal here. So before you go using your Teflon, I would recommend that you go get yourself a spool of lampwick. And again, lampwick is nothing more than a cotton, kind of like, like a cotton-based thread. And then you would apply that you would apply that in between the threads of your pipe or your spud, as this is the case here. And you get that all around. And if you choose to, and if you want to follow this up, if you want to follow this up with some Teflon tape on top of the threads, be my guest. But the final bulletproof application is going to be your blue block pipe sealant. And again, I would recommend very highly that you guys wear gloves when using this stuff because this stuff gets all over your tools and your hands. And the only way you're going to get it off is to actually use a uh, lacquer thinner. So there you have it. Uh, I hope I've helped this YouTube viewer out in, in you know, wanting to know, you know, what do you do? I cut too far in. And that's what I do. So if I actually am cutting a piece of pipe out or I'm cutting a spud out and I accidentally cut too deep into the radiator or into the fitting, the old reliable, um, the old reliable lamp wick followed by the old reliable blue block does the trick. Now, they also make another product called Grip. And it's also made by the same company, Hercules. So grip or blue block, grip happens to be black. The blue block obviously is blue. They both work just as well. And, and that's my recommendation on how you go about stopping a leak. If you feel that you have cut too deep into a fitting or you cut too deep into the radiator. And I will tell you that it's pretty much bulletproof. It's worked for me. Uh, it's a very rare occasion that I had a, actually change a fitting or replace a radiator. The blue block does the trick. The key is if you can let it set for uh, 24 hours, you're going to be in shape. So guys, there it is. Uh, questions, comments, uh, please send them to me. Um, you could also email me info at bobsplumbingvideos.com. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Stay well. Thanks for stopping by and happy plumbing. Hey folks, it's Bob here. If you find these videos helpful, please, please hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to claim your free video series, The 7 Things You Shouldn't Have to Pay a Plumber to Do. And to learn more about how to prevent a plumbing disaster in your home, check out my new video course, The No-Brainer Home Plumbing Inspection Checklist. Happy plumbing!